We're with Vince Chong this morning for our first story behind the song segment. He's, of course, the winner of the first Academy Fantasia. He's a singer, songwriter, and also a vocal coach. And this entire hour, we will be playing songs that Vince has chosen for us. So basically, we're playing your playlist today, Vince. I have my coffee. I'm ready to go. Okay, Vince, it's been a while. What have you been up to? What has the world been up to? I mean, everyone's been on lockdown. and <laughs> <laughs> A lot of changes, I think, uh, not just for me, but uh, for me personally, I've been more busy with um, uh, exploring different areas in entertainment and also production. Okay. So I wanted to do something <clears throat> a long time ago. I think I already mentioned the JD also knows that I wanted to do a animation mm. um, uh, a, a gig, right? So for the longest time, a lot of things have been on hold and back and forth, you know. Mm. So finally, I got the right look for it, the right uh, people to work with. I got a uh, private investor. So because these things take time, you know. So when finally someone believed, he, he saw my work, he said, I love that. And I was like, really? I'm just saying that. <laughs> and, you know, it's like you don't believe that, you know. You don't mm. believe it. You, you mm. cannot believe it. And it's like all of a sudden, and all this happened um, uh, be- before MCO. And he said, like, I, I, love, I love the concept, blah, blah, blah. And then um, we went back and forth. At first, we wanted to do stop motion. Then we realized stop motion is too much work. Then finally, we got a group. Um, who uh, there are Some of them are from India. And it got really, really amazing work. And we are looking forward to this. So this is my baby. Because I love animation. I love cartoon. And I understand. I'm, I'm sure like as parents, you know, we watch what our kids watch. Yeah. But for me, it's like I see what they really, really like. And I kind of like incorporated and I modified my old concept. And sort of like put, um, it's going to be, I hope it's going to work. Lah. But wow. for me, I'm excited about it. Because for so me, now, singer, songwriter, vocal coach and studio owner. Is it? Or I animator? Say, I, no, I'm not, I'm not an animator. I'm a... Uh, Sort of like a filmmaker, a creator, a content creator. I don't know what you're gonna call it, lah. But it's 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 basically that won't be the first, and I want to keep doing it because uh, I've got so many creative juices out here that is just being like this randomly out of on, your ears. Yeah, it's just coming on Instagram once in a while. I'm like, you know, I just want to use my creativity to make money, lah. Come on, for goodness sake, you know. <laughs> you're so a I mean, funny guy, actually, Vin. Ah, it's just very bored, lah. Bored childhood, lah. But the thing is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, the the thing is, I'm sure we all know that we, we can't rely on one thing these days. And um, yeah. something that I wanted to do years ago, but there was there was no like uh, sirens going on until now. Like, you know what? Got two kids running around. Mm-mm. I got to do something, man. But uh, yeah, apart from that, um, I'm also uh, building up a, a small production with another partner. So we want to do like uh, small sort of like advertisements and stuff like that. Anything to just get our hands dirty in the production process, which I really love. All right. Now let's talk about your first choice of song. Uh, It's by Luther Vandross, Impossible Dream. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind this song? To dream the impossible dream. First of all, I love his voice. Right. And second of all, I learned so much from his techniques and uh, without realizing... I started listening to Luther Vandross after I listened to Impossible Dream. And the Impossible Dream was, uh, it was a one-time, one, one-off uh, uh, sort of like a vocal lesson that I learned under this um, Filipino uh, teacher. And I was like, okay, the first time going there. And this, I'm not kidding, this true story. So the first time it's like, okay, uh, he heard me, he said, sing, sing a little bit. So I just sang random song. And it was like, the first song he gave to me was this song. I was like, oh, this song is hard, you know? Mm-hmm. And then just four lessons, and I sang, and then he was like, good. And it's like, he don't know what else to teach me. I was like, huh? How can you not know what else to teach? You know what I mean? So, but after that, I was like, he, uh, that, that song was planted in my head. And it's such a soaring, positive, motivational song. And come on, man, Luther Vandross, his voice is just so silky, chocolatey, smooth, and so much of feeling. And he, he is one of my main inspiration and, and influence on how I sing today. So you have two kids now, Vince. How's mm-hmm. fatherhood treating you? Fatherhood? Well, uh, actually, we are the same, right? You have one girl, one boy. Yes. Right? Yes. I, yeah, I mean... But uh, yours, are, yours are younger than mine, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, 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 same, the, same, uh, the same order, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, uh, 
life is good. I mean, like it's 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 uh. As they're getting older, like my son now is, uh, he just turned three, and he's able to communicate a lot, lot better. So he can't stop talking, you know. And <laughs> and it's like it's cute to see my daughter and him like being able to communicate, you know. Because before that he was like there, 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 and then she's like, no, say this, say this, and then she's getting frustrated, not understanding that he just can't talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now that he can talk, you know, and it's like uh, them like singing together. Something that I have always dreamed of before I was uh, a father, you know. I'd be like. When we got, we newly got married, and they're like, "It's so nice now. Now it's so peaceful." Huh? But imagine, so we can't wait for our kids to be singing at the back and all that. Now it's like, "Hey, shush, noisy, daddy driving lah." So is Eva a very, very nice cheche? Is, is, does she's she help take care one, of the titi? She's a wonderful cheche, but of course, the patience can be tested because, like, it's like you know, uh, life is like uh, it, uh, it repeats itself because, like. My goodness, man! Like whenever, he, okay, Tyler. I don't know whether it's all boys, but he would just go to a table and he would clear it in two seconds. Brah, everything just falls everywhere, and then she will get Tyler. And then, like when it comes to clearing up, of course, we don't just ask him to clear it up. She has to clear it up as well, whether she did it or not. But then they do it together, and then they will start fighting. Then they're like, okay, do it together. Then I have to, I play a game with them, so I do this like, a, I want to see a magic show, okay? So. When daddy goes out, I close the door and I come in, everything's clean. And they get excited. <laughs> oh, magic, magic. And then I'll do it and I'll pop. And the, the face, their faces, you know. And then we do a clean up song. Clean up. Clean. You might know that, right, Bell? Clean, clean up, fun. clean up, clean up. Everybody, We all had fun everybody. today. <laughs> yeah, there's something, yeah. So, I don't know why our parents never thought of that. Our parents were like, clean up, no, get the cane. <laughs> <laughs> get a book thrown in your face. <laughs> but yeah. is fatherhood everything you thought it would be? Oh, it's more so rewarding. Seriously, so rewarding. It's heartwarming. It's uh, and it teaches you to understand your own parents even more. And it's make me drawn closer to my own parents to understand uh, how how difficult it really is. But it's it's rewarding every day because it gets funnier by the day because you see things and you see yourself in certain traits in them. You know, yeah, like the attitude and who they are. And it's a funny thing. I think all of us are like part of our parents. It's like. The way you laugh, <laughs> you laugh like your dad. Like, ah, oh, you're angry like your mother. You know, so it's like there's everyone has a bit of everything, and I think fatherhood is very rewarding. Actually, recently I did, um, I entered a film competition with my daughter. Uh, just her and I, and she acted. I was blown away. She can act, man, this girl. So now I wonder, like, whether she knows how to pandai tipu or not. With, <laughs> <laughs> well, if she's a great actress, you can start. You know. Becoming a manager and and <laughs> push her for commercials and TV yeah. series and things like that, lah. Yeah, my 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 son is just um he he's obsessed with shapes and now he's planets and but he he is such a cheeky boy and he he's 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 a smart kid. I think I think when you're like stubborn and you don't want to listen and you know what the game is all about, like sit in a chair. No. I was like, oh, this guy's smart, man. He knows what he wants. You know, I mean, he he knows. I mean, but it's just uh, it's just a balance. Like, how harsh should we punish our kids? Mm. It's hard. I mean, like, I got a whooping of my life when I was a kid. I'm sure all of us have, you know. But it's like, do we want to go there? You didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Angel I was a very good girl. One. Okay, like, I mean, I mean, it depends. I mean, like, I I I was okay. I'm also like Tyler. I'm the second. Mm. You know, I'm a boy. And my like, uh, you don't know how naughty you are until your father beats the living daylight out of you. Like, oh, oh, that must have been wrong, like what I did, you know. <laughs> so I mean, like, um, I think it's challenging as a parent to want to know. Like as I said earlier, it's rewarding at the same time. It's challenging when you want to control your anger, your temper. Yeah. Like uh, when I'm doing work, and then my daughter can just randomly come into my studio and like, oh, daddy, daddy, you want to sit your lap, start touching all your keyboard and whatever you want to touch. I want to sing too, and yeah, do it like you know. <laughs> patience, lah, right? So it's like that's your patience. So it's not that they want to catch out you; they just want your attention. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So and and sometimes I, I guilty as charged. I sometimes I come in and then you're, if you're still on work, you're still on your phone, right? You still want to check stuff and all that. And then it's like, do I have to do it now? Because like, cause they are. I had done my work. I come back and I'm still on my phone. So I decided, you know, come back from work. Put it aside for me. You're not, you're not gonna die, okay? And then like uh, observe, ask, what do you do today? Da da da. And then just sort of like just have that even if that 10, 20 minutes of golden time with your your child. And mm. I think it makes a big difference. Connect, connect exactly. Otherwise, you won't know your child who they are. Yeah. You don't know who they are. 
Now let's talk about this uh, next song that you've chosen for us to play. It's by Leo Sayer. Yes. When I need you, oh, what man. is the story behind this song when for you? I need- oh my God! This the first time I saw this song, and it stuck to me until now. It was uh, with it. I saw it on the Muppets by Jim Henson. Yes. And oh, you inv- saw it. You, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. it no, I okay. saw it. I saw it because I was uh, we all Sesame Street kids. You know what I mean? And uh, we grew up watching Muppets. Yeah. So when I saw that episode when they invited Leo Slayer to sing that song with all these like borderline creepy looking puppets like singing along. <laughs> But it was so colorful and all that. But uh, you, uh, the first thing as a child, I was like, wow, that's a, such a simple melody, but such a beautiful song, you know. When I need... And it's, um, I, I'm, a, I'm very drawn to, as a, as a musician, as a singer, I'm very drawn to hooks or mel- uh, songs with very strong melody. Mm. And I just love the whole simplicity of it. But it's the way it moves from the, 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 the chord progression and all that is just... It's just very, very haunting. Very, very haunting, but it's just, it's such a beautiful song. But it's, it's just the, the memory that's staying into my head where you just see all these puppets singing along with this one human. <laughs> it's just beautiful. JD, you saw that, right? You I remember, I remember that? watching that exactly. How old we're, were you when you saw we're, that? We're all the same age, Lam. We're roughly the same <laughs> age, yeah, exactly. The Muppets, same era. Nobody watches the Muppets these days. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no one watches the Muppets. Hey, Sesame I mean, Street like, is still on TV, okay? Yeah. My, my son watches Elmo. Elmo, Elmo, I gotta give it up to I give it to them. So El, Elmo is like as he will be like, Hi there, hi Jenny, what's going on? Hi, everyone is locked down today. Oh, what are you doing? What do you do? So everyone is like, What do you do today? And then everyone will just show what they do. My kids they never watch Elmo, they were drawn to it. Mm. So I mean, like, I think sometimes like uh, certain things can survive if they evolve, you know. Yeah. And you make and convincing inst- Elmo, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that one I have a special effects here. See? This this knob here. <laughs> okay. Now let's move on to talk set three. Now earlier you spoke about uh, a short film competition that you joined with your yeah, daughter. Right. Can you that's tell right. us a little bit more about that? Well, that was really based on my life. I mean, like, uh, well, I play like a struggling videographer. So I go out on my, uh, I go around uh, places to get footages because there are people who do this like stock footages and clients actually pay for it and all that, you know. So it's like uh, those, those kind of stock footages where you sit there and you got to, you got to take like the footage for hours, you know, mm. or like one or, or two hours. Or time lapse want, kind of time, thing. You just want to get that shot, you know what I mean? And my daughter at the side there, like there's a scene at the lake and she's throwing stones and she's like <laughs> messing up my shot, you know. And then I'm like frustrated as a dad. Then I pass her the phone. Talk like, okay, I'll pass you the phone. Then you don't catch out. And then she, she decides to take video with me. And I'm like pushing her away. Don't catch out. Throughout the whole day, she's like, I don't know what she's doing. I'm filming. She's filming. And to my horror, uh, in the evening, I went back. I go back home to discover that the SD card is corrupted. Oh, and, no. And I'm like, like almost at the brink of losing it and, and and then as I have my chat with the client and client says sorry I have to look for someone else we can't wait on you and as I you know in, in the phone when you go to your main page and you can just like move everything away yeah so when I pop and then slides in is my daughter's video footages and I noticed things that I didn't notice that she was shooting like I fell asleep near the waterfall and she pat me and she gave me a kiss on the cheek and uh, she shot things like uh, following my footsteps and stuff like that. And I, I cried. And the thing, the whole video is called Saved. So there's a dual meaning to it, you know. You might, have, might not have saved the footages in your work, but you save your relationship. Uh. Wow. Yeah, so that was it's a very powerful thing. And I think a lot of daddies who have seen it and, and parents, or even those who are not even parents, a lot of them cried. And, Where uh, can we see this? Short film. Uh, I can send, actually I sent the link. I can send the link over to you guys yeah yeah actually uh keith has that link uh, i think keith can, can can, can let you can, watch it can the public watch it the public can watch it they can vote for it because it's actually i'm actually representing malaysia at the moment because it's like a worldwide competition so it's uh it's under road actually so road has done this competition um i my friend who actually uh asked me to join this you know he was a cinema cinematographer i wrote the thing i did sound design, and for the first time, I did film scoring for it. So I film scored the entire thing. And film scoring makes a huge difference, you know, I'm sure you know, right? Like film scoring, when it's catered towards every beat of the film and everything, it just changes. Try watching Braveheart with like a random, 
like a feel good track like ding 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 and as as they're going to war and all. You know, <laughs> to come and to kill you. Hey, come, they'll come and to kill you for your freedom. Ding 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 ding. So I mean, um, I had a great experience, and my daughter just like, she did a lot of method acting because it was literally really hot, and then she, the scene is supposed she's supposed to sit down looking like oh frustrated. So we thought like most kids might like don't want I don't want to shoot already right. She just went with it, you know. Mm. She was like, okay, Papa, just just act now. And she was like, oh. then she sat down. And she just, wow. I was blown away. She was so committed for chips. <laughs> <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> All right, let's check. Let's talk about this next song that you chose for us. It's by Etta James. Mm, by Etta God. James, at last. Is oh, this your wedding this. song or what? No, this was actually my younger sister's wedding song, and I can't believe that. Uh, I I felt so ashamed that I didn't know about this song. Huh? So yeah, I didn't know about this song. It's I never James. heard. Yeah. I, exactly. So uh, when my sister got married, Pamela, this was uh, probably like uh, my God, uh, five five years ago. All right, five six more more than that. Six years ago. How long? Yeah, about there. And I kind of I saw like this song sounds so familiar. You know when you hear songs but you don't really like okay what's the name of the song and this and that. Mm. But at that time I had time to absorb the whole thing because it was her walk in song. You know, beautiful setting. The the it was her wedding was held in the in 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 the in the vineyard. Mm. You know, and it's open grass and everything. And then she's walking down and like, Ellen. I was like, wow, my sister got good taste in music, man. Right? <laughs> <you?" laughs> and I heard the entire song, and ever since I first fell in love with it, and it was a song that I will constantly give to some of my advanced students, because uh, I when I teach vocal, I feel like okay. You want to learn soul. This is a. It's not a complicated soul, but it has a lot of uh, different movements in the vocal sort of like um, the dynamics of the vocals. And every time I start introducing this song to students who never heard of it, female singers in, in uh, predominantly, and they'll be like, "Wow, nice lady song. Like, wow, got so much feel. Well, that is soul." I say, "Yes, that is soul. That is soul." Stop TikTok. <laughs> That is so okay. okay. Is Next good. one. Okay. Last talk set ready, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was fast. Yeah. Can I do the MC a bit or no need that MC. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. okay. Um. Now, as a singer songwriter, Vince, how has music shaped your life? Um. Mm, apart like, what from... was your earliest memory of of enjoying music? Wait, wait, I see his face. I need to get the bottom dish ready already. Right? <laughs> Can you see my face? I saw your stuff. face. I'm like ready for that. No, I, no, no, I, 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 I was, I was going to say something dumb, but I said no lah. Better not. <laughs> Feels like it's a, when you wrap up, you got to be serious a bit, lah. Yeah. You know? um, well, for me, um, my early memories of music when I really got into it was actually when I uh, sang in church, and uh, joining the choir. And uh, learning uh, how do you juggle harmony, and I really was because I'm I love singing from a very very young age, and I remember uh, I had a a a deck B deck cassette. Okay, for you guys out there, I don't know bro, double okay. deck man, double deck a double deck. So one a B deck records, a deck plays, and B deck can you that's where you copy people's your friends mixtape or something like that. <laughs> so. I used to do this. I used to, uh, and it had, I had like a uh, like a small. It was like a. It had a little mic input, so I would sing into the B deck. I'll sing one line, and I'll put that over to A deck. I'll listen to it, sing along with that uh, main melody, do a harmony, pop pop pop, until it like it was slowly deteriorate. But I did a cappella, and that was where my love of music and uh, sort of like really really enhance you know even my mom said at a very very young age I think like when I was like um, she said many 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 years ago we they were, we were on holiday I don't even remember this but uh, she said I was probably like uh, three three years old and they passed like a fun fair and there was a Ferris wheel and there was a lot of music and the first thing I really uttered out and I I, I said was like music music I said music. So music has always been a part of my life. My father plays the guitar. My mom loves to sing. And uh, my whole family loves to sing, in fact, you know. And I think music has always been a part of my life on a day-to-day basis. And I just love singing. I mean, like, you, you picture this. You go to a beautiful cafe. Mm. So nice, you know. The settings are very beautiful, but it's quiet. 
you know. But all you need, if you just switch on that one, it, 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 that music that changes the environment, whether it's a deaf leopard or something, you know. I mean, it, it changes the environment. It's true. When you travel, you know, it, it creates a mood. And that's why music makes the world go round. And it makes me go rounder a bit too. So it's like, you know, it, it makes you happy, you know. Um, I mean, it shapes you. Literally shapes you. Now, JD, come on. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I lost my mouse. Hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, but uh, honestly speaking, I think all of us, like, uh, I think kids or so, like, I, I notice uh, music uh, being, like, my daughter and my son. Oh, my God. They, they're so drawn into music. Most kids are. They're very drawn into music. And I think, like, that you hardly see any child, like, uh, you play music and you'll be like, I don't want that. I hate that. No, they don't. They, they, they would like automatically, especially at a very young age. But it's society that changes you. You know, when you grow up, you're like, oh, it's lame. Like you dance right, to this music. And it's like, pure, you, you get pressured and then you lose how to express. And I think that is the thing where, uh, you know, from a young age, I love to sing, but I never, never really sort of like, I, I would never sing in public because I, I never had confidence. I had very, very low self-esteem. Because I was a young kid, I was a very round, big kid, like, you know. So, so the, like, uh, I got, like, uh, in high school, I will keep quiet. Nobody knew that I could sing or anything, you know. So, like, uh, it was from four, and then it was talent time. And then, uh, they, come on, let's join. Uh, this guy's like, hey, you, 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 you want to sing with me this duet? Uh? So, he's like, okay, come sing. So, he sang. Uh, so, he sang one line, he sang one line. So, when I started singing, everyone was like, all the bullies and all those people, all, like, you know, like, the the, 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 the the cool people the cool popular p kids all you know they'd be like they all start doing that i'm like i, I don't know because i don't i don't i don't straight away like wow you see i can sing you know i didn't feel that way you know what i mean i just love to sing mm. and you could <laughs> you could see the the change of change of colors and tune from the people around you you know and um it was like uh those like cool kids all of a sudden like uh the girls that never really looked at me before, <laughs> all of a sudden they're like, wow, you got such a nice voice. All the all those guys at the back there, like, you know, nice voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but now that you're like sort of moving towards production and filmmaking and all that, do you think yeah. music and Definitely. singing will still be part of your life? This particular production has a lot of that, has a lot of music, has film scoring. Uh, and uh, uh, it, 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 to me, music is so important. Like, uh, hence why I pressed upon talking about um, uh, film scoring in, in a film makes so much difference, you know. It, <clears throat> it elevates uh, the material that you have. And choices of music is very, very important, but never limit yourself. I don't limit myself. Like, I will listen to reggae, rap, R&B, hip hop, folk music, everything. Uh, Feng Tao mm, depends like Maybe if I got a headache, I'll be like, yeah, you know what? Let's make it worse. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <fine>. let's <coughs> talk about this next song that you chose yeah. for us. It's from the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson. Beat it. Why this song? What's the my, story? My God, beat it! Come on, man! Come on! You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, no. Oops. Michael Jackson, in my time, in our time, JD, like when growing up, he was the only pop artist that was really ringing it out there. Like now we got all the K-pop, it's like, it's so diluted, you know, there's just so many, you don't know who. No one is able uh, to shine like how Michael Jackson shone that time, you know. He was like the only one that was like, there was no one around him that was even trying to do what he was doing. And because he, he stood out so much, and even up to today's standards, he's still so amazing, for goodness sake. You know what I mean? And Be That was the video that I saw. I think it was a debut because my uncle was like a huge Michael Jackson fan because it's, it's always his videos. He always does something amazing with his videos, right? So it's like, wow. Dang, dang, dang. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, that guitar straight away got me straight away. And I had this Michael Jackson t-shirt that I was so happy. I wore it like almost every other day. <laughs> And I was a big kid already getting this tummy, you know. So it's a Michael Jackson face, but the, the face was like 3D. You know? Expanded. <laughs> <laughs> 3D Michael Jackson shirt. It's like, wow, this Michael Jackson 3D, they can touch the nose. Uh. <laughs> so like, 
Um, and I would dance to that song. I mean, it's such a catchy tune. Beat it, beat it. Oh, man, I, as a kid, I would do all the dance moves. And that was one of the most memorable um, times of my life uh, growing up. I was probably about five years old, five, six years old. And uh, dancing to, to beat it, thinking that I was Michael Jackson. Up to today, man, I think I can dance like Michael Jackson. But Michael Jackson, but when someone videos me, I was like, mm, okay, never mind. I won't do that anymore. <laughs> but everyone knows the move, the kick and the... Mm, <laughs> And bite the bottom lip and mm. but uh, beat it is uh, my childhood jam uh, up to today. I still love beat it. Who doesn't love? Do you like beat it, guys? You have to love beat it. Come on, man. If you don't love beat it, beat it. Uh. <laughs>